is exciting. We're starting our second ten. Wow, I know. So what episode is it? It's eleven. Of Pandemic Kitchen. Yay! So what are we going to be doing tonight? Well, we're going to be doing one of Bruce's dishes. We're going to do my stuffed pork choppers. Yum! Yeah. Well, you know what they say about pigs. No. A pig resembles a saint in that they are more honored in death than they were in life. Anyway, let's do our delicious pork chopper. And thanks for coming back. Okay, much like our pork roast, we're going to have a goo that we put over the final product here. But the goo takes a while to make, so we're going to start with that. The chops take almost no time, so we really have to get the goo started first. So this is going to be very slightly different than the one we did for the pork roast. We're going to start by chopping up a few candy gingers. Mix them all into this little pan. Some brown sugar. Put a little white sugar in there too, just to give it a little bit more body. You don't have to do that, the brown sugar is sufficient. Um, about a cup of orange juice. Some orange marmalade. Pork loves fruit. It's its favorite. Try it sometime. Give a pig an apple. See what happens. I'm going to use one of Carla's tea balls. Don't tell her. I'm going to add a little bit of red peppers. About a tablespoon of allspice. And bunch of uh, mustard seed and some cloves. Drop it in here. And last but not least, a little bit of fruit. I'm going to put some raisins. I got a mix of um, white raisins and red raisins and a few uh, dried cranberries. You can really add just about anything to this. It's, uh, it's not a big deal. I'm going to boil this up really well. It's going to uh, extract all the goodies from the spices and then start thickening. We'll pull these out once we think they've lost all of their, their goodness. Hey guys, I'm back and I'm going to be doing my smashed potatoes. They're the ones I did in episode number six when we did the pork roast. And you see, we've really come to the conclusion that the best thing with pork is smashed potatoes. So, I'm going to be making my smashed potatoes again. And I've got little red potatoes here, about 13 of them. I'm going to put them in the water and turn it on. Hi. I'm going to cover them now. So now we're going to have to figure out what we're going to stuff our delicious pork choppers with. Yum, yum. I'm going to start by taking a bunch of pine nuts. Always go very well with pork. And just barely browning them. Okay, it's starting to get a little tiny bit of brown on them which is just all you really want. They burn very easily. There's a buttload of fat in here, so you don't want them to get overdone. But that's about all we need on that guy. And so we buy these giant pork loins and we cut them up into chops and we cut them up into roasts. And I've already cut these up and I have these things bagged and frozen and they're ready to roll. They'll freeze for a couple of weeks at least. So I got these beautiful pork loin chops. No bone on them. Bones do help, but uh, they're not absolutely necessary. They're still really good without them. And the first thing I'm going to do is find a good end and then stick my 
super sharp knife in them. Cut a, an opening big enough for me to get my goo inside of it. Try not to overshoot. And try not to cut yourself. That would be bad. Um, take the next one. finger in, make sure it's got a good cavity there. That one two, that one three, beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff these. I have tried stuffing these things with panko and rehydrated goody stuff and blue cheese and I found actually the best thing to stuff these things with is just very simple. A little bit of Parmesan cheese and a few pine nuts. So, blue cheese is really great, but then all you taste is the blue cheese. Take a little bit of the Parmesan cheese, shove them on in, take a couple of pine nuts, shove them on in. Okay. You gotta stuff them really well. The more Parmesan you have, the happier you'll be in the end, so don't worry too much about overstuffing them. A few pine nuts. You can also put them, a few raisins in here. That's all sometimes good, but you don't really taste them that much. It doesn't make that much of a difference. So, that. Give it about as much as you can get in there. The more, the merrier. Okay, he's getting nice and fat. And in one of the cuts, Carla got me these lovely toothpicks with which to seal it up with. And we put them aside. There we go. Okay, so it looks like this thing started to reduce really nicely. All the spices have given up. So we're gonna pull them out. To start the pork choppers. To begin with, I'm going to add a little bit of butter to a heating pan. Get this thing out of the way so it doesn't get too hot. As soon as the butter starts looking really nice and tasty, we put in our pork chops. All we're doing is getting them started here. We're going to do this in the oven. Now that it's started to brown just a little bit on the outside, take it off the fire and put it in the top of a 375 degree oven and close her on up. After it's been in the oven for a couple of minutes, what you want to do is you want to put a probe thermometer into pretty much the middle of the cheese, because that's going to be the coolest part of the whole thing um, on one of the pork choppers. And you want to set it for about 120 degrees. Yes, 120 degrees is way too cool to, uh, to eat it, but it's a good place to go to our next step. So, going on out. This one looks like a good victim. Putting it on in. That's already 91 degrees. Okay. 
We've hit 120 degrees. Take a little of this goo. Don't touch the handle. This handle is so hot, don't even think about touching it. Spoon a little over each, just to glaze it. Back into the oven until it hits about 138 degrees. Okay. We've hit about 140 degrees, which is perfect. And stop the little thing from making horrible noises. Take a look. Don't mm. touch the handle. Do not touch the handle with anything that can't take the heat. That looks like it's probably pretty good. Take it out of the oven. Mmm, those look amazing. Put them somewhere nice and out of the way, and do not touch the handle. I'm fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us, cats look down on us, but pigs treat us as equals. The pork is out, so now it's time to make the smashers. Gonna bring them over to the sink and drain the water out of them. Okay, these puppies are ready. So now we're gonna add some butter. Good chunk of butter in there. We're going to add some cream. About a half a cup. You don't want too much. You could always add more. I just like to see how much. I have in there first because I don't want to get them too mushy. This looks pretty good though. And of course some, oh yes, some kosher salt. Here we go. A few dashes. Potatoes need salt. That's about three. Thank you chicken. So the sauce is thickened nicely, so we're going to put it in our goo receptacle. Mm. Doesn't have any of the spices in there anymore, but most of them have already given up their ghost in the tea ball. The carryover has taken the meat to probably 145 to 150 degrees while it was resting. Now we add some potatoes and some chives, if you happen to have them. And dinner is served. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy came home with us. Poor little piggy. What have we learned from our adventure into pork chops? Well, we have learned to make our goo by putting the spices into a tea ball rather than making chewy bits in our sauce. We have learned to use a mild but flavorful cheese for the stuffing. We have learned that you can add small fruit bits to your sauce and to your meat to enhance the flavor. And we have learned to always remove the toothpick before you've eaten it. The time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things, of shoes and ships 
and sealing wax, and cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. If our pigs had had wings, they probably would have not been here. Thank you, and good night.